Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television is sponsored by Nutrien. Nutrien, feeding the future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Perspective. This is a public affairs presentation of Florida Gateway College Television. It, all, it is also a public affairs presentation of WQHL Radio and WCJX Radio, and we appreciate the listeners to the program today. My guest on the program is Joseph Peterson. He is the Director of Horticulture and Water Resources Programs here at Florida Gateway College. We're going to talk specifically about how to grow things uh, and the program itself. We'll do that when we come back. You're watching Perspective. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. Welcome back to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. Joseph Peterson is a, an instructor, a coordinator of horticulture programs as well as water resources programs. Joseph, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about this program because it is, uh, it's one of the more successful programs here at Florida Gateway College. It's called horticulture. And when you say horticulture, you think about growing stuff. That's uh, correct. That's what I do anyway. Uh, describe what the program is uh, that you are part of. Well, Florida Gateway College is a, one of the top horticulture programs probably since the 1960s. Um, it, it's plant science. It's the art of growing uh, ornamental plants. That's what horticulture really is, from turf grasses to landscape plants. Um, we deal with the sports turf industry, so your golf courses, your, your football stadium turf. We have um, into the nursery trade, even um, growing peaches and apples, plums, all your, um, your fruit production. Uh, even down to homeowners and their gardens. This is, uh, it's, uh, that's what horticulture is in a nutshell. It's how to grow, cultivate these plants, uh, and produce them globally. This is uh, more of a, a scientific program versus, yes. versus one that you just use an almanac. Because uh, I know a lot of farmers, again, this, this community is still uh, big into farming. I know mm -hmm. they grow a lot of hay, they grow a lot of uh, grow crops here, uh, but this is this really the technical too much fertilizer, not enough fertilizer, uh, this plant thrives in this, this doesn't. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're going to learn when you go into the program. Uh, well our program, our horticulture program consists of two different certificates. One is a certified horticulture professional, which is a national accepted certificate, and then we have the advanced certified horticulture professional and landscape technician. Some of the classes in this program are landscape plants, which teaches you plant ID from everything from trees to ground covers and vines, shrubs, um, and not just trees limited here to Florida region, but to the actual the in to entire net United States. Uh, we have basic botany, the, the science behind what plants need and why they grow, what they require. We have irrigation classes. We've got soils and fertilizers. Um, we have turf grass. We have golf course materials and, and, and material construction estimating, project estimating. Um, there's all different types of classes to try to give a very well-rounded education in horticulture. Um, it's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was thinking, you know, you're thinking common sense is how a lot of the stuff the information gets passed down from generation, what, what worked, what didn't work, but there's a science to what plants will not freeze. Uh, it, you look at where we live, we have a kind of a brutal summer, and then, but we also have a couple days where it freezes, and so there's a chance that some of those plants that normally would thrive, say in the north, northeast, don't do so well here. Talk, talk a little bit about so So the, the nation is set up into what's called hardiness zones. Um, all the way from a zone two up in northern Maine down to a zone 11, say Key West. And uh, plants usually can survive in a, in a range of 
they're hardy to a specific area. So for example, we're in a hardiness zone of eight. Uh, this is actually really one of the better growing zones. You can grow quite a few of uh, pretty much, well, I don't wanna say everything, but there's a lot of plants. Our, our palette of plant choices here is significantly larger than say in Southern Florida um, or even in the Northern parts of the country. We have, you can bring, for example, in Maine, there are shrubs and trees up in Maine, like the bald cypress that will grow in that area, your red maple. Um, those plants will grow up there very well, but they also do exceptionally well in our area. In fact, the red maple and the bald cypress are native to Florida also. They're native to the entire East Coast. So we live in an area that, yes, we have long summers. We can't bring some of the, the southern plants up from South Florida, some of our tropicals that, that people tend to really like. We can't bring those up because they will die in the wintertime up here. We do get cold enough for that. But the, a lot of the northern plants can come down. Your roses, your azaleas do exceptionally well here. Um, there, there's just exceptional, your fruit trees, your peaches from, from Georgia, there's varieties now of peaches that you can grow down here in North Florida because we do get enough cold weather in the winter time to handle that. Now, uh, is it uh, a, a myth that some plants need cold to, to grow? Yes, it's not a myth. Uh, there, in fact, a lot of your, your fruiting varieties of plants, they, they require a chill hours. For example, uh, an Anna, apple tree uh, requires 400 to 600 chill hours in order for fruit to set. If you don't have those chill hours in the wintertime, you won't get fruit. Now, the tree will still grow, it'll still produce leaves, you're just not gonna get the blossoms. So there are some plants like that do, that do require the cold uh, in order to grow and set fruit. Then also there's what's called stratification. Some plant seeds in order to germinate require a period of cold temperatures in order to break down their seed coat and allow the new emerging plant to come out. Well, I learned something, I've got a, a Meyer lemon tree in my backyard, mm -hmm. uh, and I learned something about frost. Yes. Uh, very early on. One year we had beautiful weather in the spring and I got plenty of blossoms on this Meyer lemon. And when you have blossoms, you have plenty of fruit. And then two years ago, we had a frost is that when most damage is done, when a, bl a blossoming plant that, that produces fruit gets frozen? Yes. And, and, the, and the buds or the blossoms die? That is, that is exactly correct. And in your case with the Meyer lemon, it's, uh, it's really nice. In fact, one little trick of the trade, and, and orchards up north use it all the time. Um, lemons and your citrus don't like a lot of cold temperatures, and that frost will kill those blossoms. So what you can do if you've got a mist nozzle on your hose, you go out there, if you know that it's gonna drop below freezing, go out there and spray down, mist down your tree, mist down those blossoms, mist down those buds. It'll, what will happen is the water temperature will stay at 32 degrees. Even if it perform, uh, puts ice around that and encapsulates the flower or the bud, ice never drops below 32 degrees. Even if you're in 20 degree temperature, ice is always 32. Your flowers and your buds will accept that temperature and it won't harm them. So tell me, at what point do they really don't like the, what, what, at what point is it like in the 20s for any sustained time or? I would think so. I think if you drop below, and this is my best guess on this one, below 28 degrees, uh, especially for your citrus, you drop below that, um, you'll, you'll start to see damage. But again, you go out there and, and mist down your trees. It, it keeps the temperature up. It keeps the, the ice and the water on it and it protects it against that freezing. So you're gonna learn all of this. You're gonna learn what trees need more sunlight than others. Mm -hmm. That's uh, correct. What, what shrubs need more sunlight than others. That's correct. Uh, is there a book on that? I mean, or is this just something you learn in, in the, in the uh, program itself? Oh, there are, there are thousands of horticulture textbooks out there and just growing, growing books. Um, Ortho produces some great ones. In the program ourselves, um, our landscape plants class uses uh, Textbooks from Michael Durr, he's one of the, the top horticulturalists in the nation. Um, our ag, our ag um, what is it, principles, no, excuse me, our soils and fertilizers class uses a, a soil management textbook. There's just a lot of great things that we use in the program uh, that I recommend to all of our students and keeping these textbooks, keep them on the shelf. It's great knowledge for the rest of your life. Now, uh, again, you also teach about uh, diseases. Mm -hmm molds, uh, bugs. 
Talk, talk a little bit about that. I mean, how, how in-depth do you get when you're talking about uh, perhaps rodents? I know moles can be a danger to a golf course, uh, but there are bugs, slugs, snails. There, there are so many different pests and, and disease that, that affect horticulture. Uh, in our advanced certificate program, we have two classes. We have an integrated pest management one and an integrated pest management two. The first one focuses on uh, diseases and pests of turf grass species because there's a plethora of those out there. Uh, and the second class focuses more on your ornamentals, your trees, your shrubs, uh, your gardens, and, and those pests in those. So we do go quite specifically into those. In fact, uh, later on in the program, I'm going to tell you some, uh, some solutions to how to combat those pests. Well, you know, you, you look at uh, uh, in our current society, organic is better than, than um, it's hard to be organic and be in an area like we are that where there are lots of bugs, there are lots of things that like to destroy uh, plant material. There's a way to do it organically as well as the old old fashioned way with, with seven dust, right? That's correct. Uh, you recommend either one, depending on uh, what, what you're growing. I mean, when you're talking about maybe, a, uh, I think of when you're growing herbs or something like that, you don't want to put seven dust on herbs that you're actually going to eat, because there's probably not, you're not going to be able to wash it well enough. Correct. Uh, but you probably teach that as well. It's all incorporated into our integrated pest management. It's, it's, it's talking about pest management and how to really find the best control methods for this. Uh, and I'm not going to say organic is, is always the best choice. Um, there are other options out there. For example, with organic gardening, um, arsenic is allowable and great production for organic ar gardening. Arsenic pretty much kills anything. Um, yet your organic grapes will have arsenic on them. You still need to wash them, um, but it's, it's a natural occurring element. So there's all different types of aspects to trying to find the best control methods for your, your crop, whether it's turf or trees or tomatoes. Um, but there's always a, a good fit and it's been tried and true. I mean, we've been, we've been growing in this nation for, the, well, forever. Uh, we, we grow to eat and sustain ourselves and we've developed over time some of the best practices and we're constantly coming up with new things and better ways of doing things. Well, when, when you take a horticulture class, again, all, mm -hmm. all of the, the uh, lessons are online. That's right. Uh, and you've got a, a staff of, of uh, instructors who teach online. So you don't, if you wanted to be in a different location, say you were in Georgia, you could take a horticulture program mm -hmm. through the college and not have to come to class. That's correct. It's 100%. All 10 classes are 100% online. And, uh, and the nice thing about it, too, is if you do happen to be out of state, uh, Florida Gateway College has one of the lowest in-state tuition rates, um, which is $230 a credit, uh, compared to some out-of-state tuition rates up to $1,500 a credit. So for our online programs, whether you're in-state or out-of-state, we have a really great rate for that. And again, the horticulture knowledge that we're teaching is not geared to just Florida. And that's what makes it exceptional. You could take this knowledge and go anywhere in the world with it. Uh, especially the nation. All right. We're going to talk some more with Joseph Peterson about horticulture. We're also going to have some tips that he's put together mm -hmm. on how you can be a better gardener at home, yeah. uh, how you can prevent uh, pests and things like that. We'll do that when we come back. You're watching Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. Mosquitoes will bite day and night, so protect yourself with these tips. Keep mosquitoes outside by shutting doors and covering windows with screens. Use EPA-approved insect repellents anytime you're outdoors. Cover your skin with long sleeves and pants. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in water. Just a bottle cap of water is all they need. So drain, refresh, or cover anything around buildings that can hold water at least weekly and put away outside items that aren't being used. A message from the Florida Department of Health. Welcome back to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. I'm Mike McKee. My guest is Joe, Joseph Peterson. Uh, the, uh, you do horticulture, you do water resources, mm -hmm. two very important things near and dear to everybody who lives in Florida. Especially uh, this area. Yeah. You've got uh, certain jobs that you can get in the horticulture program. You mentioned you could get a landscape job. Mm -hmm. uh, you could learn how to do landscaping, know what plants thrive in certain areas in a in a landscape. 
you know, I know that I've talked to some folks that were part of the Alligator Fest about using plants that don't require a lot of water or that are native to our area that will not have to be fertilized as much as other plants. So there's a lot of things in landscaping that you learn in, in this program. Also, if you want to become a turf grass manager, um, right. if you want to work on a golf course, if you want to do that, that's also, but really, Joe, that was part of what the college was known for. Was known for. Uh, we had a wonderful golf landscape operations program for many years, and uh, for for whatever reason, students weren't gravitating as they were. Uh, and I think part of that was because of the downturn in the economy. A lot of golf courses were closing, and they weren't building them as rapidly as they were at one time. But uh, you're you're sort of giving. Uh, giving that program a boost again and getting people interested in, in working in that field. You put together some uh, horticulture tips. And, and the, you know, this, Joe, this may become uh, part of a show here that we do from, uh, from, from now on. But here's a slide. Now you got coffee. I don't know what's in the green stuff there, and it looks like vegetables it and aspirin. It is, it's vegetables. So, is, what, what's the green stuff up at the top right? All right, that, that is alfalfa. Alfalfa. Alfalfa cubes, what you'd find at your local farm and feed store to feed your horses. Alfalfa, okay, so that's something that, okay. So these all have something in common. They do. Uh, all of these have different uses in your home garden and landscape that you wouldn't normally think of. Uh, and I want to talk about these. For example, well, you know, I've always heard that, that coffee, and I, I've seen people take grounds and do house plants, mm -hmm. and, and put uh, grounds in a house plant, or or they do them around their shrubs. And I never knew why that was. Well, uh, the, the coffee is a is very acidic. The coffee bean itself, and it makes a great growing medium for this. But it, these are just some examples of what you can do with your coffee grounds. Uh, don't throw them into the trash. I mean, this is a high high dollar, high value product. Deodorize your fridge just as well as baking soda does. Um, hide furniture scratches, this is awesome. So you take a Q-tip with some, with some coffee grounds, moisten the Q-tip with the coffee grounds and rub it on any scratches on your, your inside furniture. And a couple applications, let it dry, it's a light brown. The more you do it, the darker it gets. So you can match almost any, any furniture polish that's out there or, or color. Um, repelling insects, your ants and your slugs. If you take coffee, coffee grounds, spread them around the outside of your house um, or away from your doors and no, so on. Let me ask you, would this work for ant beds currently in use? <laughs> now, yes, it will, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't kill the ants. What it does is it forces them to relocate. Go somewhere else, okay. They'll go somewhere else, and, and somewhere else might be just five feet away. Now, do you, it seems like you look at that landscape in the photograph, that would be a lot of coffee grounds. That would be a lot of coffee grounds. Something like this, uh, for, for example, if you had, um, in a lot of northern climates, there's a plant called the hosta. Slugs love eating that hosta. You would just put it around the specific plants that are attacked by an ant or by a slug or a snail. And then and the last thing, you've got, last thing you've got on this is acidic growing medium. It looks like a hydrangea. That is a hydrangea. Hydrangeas are really cool. This happens to be what's called an endless summer hydrangea. And when I say it's an acidic growing medium, if you were to incorporate coffee grounds into the potting soil or your mix or around your plants, it will lower the pH of the soil. For example, in a hydrangea, in a high pH or a very alkaline soil, the blooms will be pink. In a neutral soil, which is around seven, they're gonna be purple. And as you lower the pH, increase the acidity, they'll start to turn blue. So you can have on one shrub, depending on the soil type, different color blossoms. Yes, I've always heard that about hydrangeas, uh, but that's, that's interesting to know. So that's coffee grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, the, this is, it looks like vegetables to me. It is, this is celery, carrots. Uh, you can do this with any, and the next time you make not a soup, but anytime you boil food, period, whether it's chicken breast for shredding later uh, to put in a, a stew or something, or it, it's vegetables. The water that you pull off of this, the, 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 the old Southerners used to have a term called pot liquor, and I, I haven't heard it very often anymore, uh, but some of my older gentlemen friends, they, they know exactly what that is. And they would drink this when their moms would make boiled vegetables, they'd take the water and they'd drink it. Well. Don't throw that down the drain. I've been known to do that quite a bit. This, what happens when you boil any food, whether it's chicken or, or vegetables and so on, all of these vegetables, these foods have nutrients and vitamins in that. And as you boil it, it leaches out into the water. Use that water, cool it off, and use it on your indoor plants. And I've, I've heard this, my father-in-law uh, would drink pot liquor, but uh -huh. he would also put cornbread in it. So, oh, yes. And, and, that's, and it mostly was from greens, either mm -hmm. collards, mustards, or 
or turnip greens, and, and so that there is some truth to that. Uh, and would always he'd always fight you for that at the end of the meal. <laughs> uh, but so again, this is common practice? Well, it's, it should be common practice. A lot of people just don't understand that. I mean, if it's, if it's good for our bodies, the nutrient-wise to ingest, it really is good for your house plants too. Use that as your fertilizer water. All right, so we got aspirin now. I know you got a, you got a thing of aspirin here, but I, do, but I thought you might just have a headache, but no, we're actually, you actually use this. I want to talk about, aspirin is acetylsalicylic acid, if I'm saying that correctly. That's I believe easy I am. for you to say. Acetylsalicylic acid. Um, it's actually, this is, this is something that you can use organically. Acetylsalicylic acid is, formed, is found in uh, quite a few plants, especially willows and in their bark. A lot of plants naturally produce this. Well, for us, it'll thin out the blood a little bit. For, for humans, it helps with headaches and pain. Um, but in plants, it has a different effect. Acetylsalicylic acid is, or aspirin, is very bitter to the taste. And plants, because it's naturally occurring in some plants, they readily accept this. They, they'll soak it up through their roots or through their plant tissues, and it stays within the plant. We can't taste it, so if you were to use this on your tomato plants or your potatoes or your corn or whatever you want to use this on, you'd require a lot, but if you ate the fruit, you'd never know that aspirin was there. You'd never taste it. But the bugs are very sensitive to this, and they don't like it. It doesn't kill the bugs, but for example, if you're growing tomatoes and you have horned caterpillar munching on your leaves, and if you were to water your tomatoes or spray down your tomato plants with four aspirin per gallon of water of the 81 milligrams, water down, or spray it on your plants or water your plants, the plants take that aspirin up into the leaves, into the foliage, and as soon as the caterpillars or the bugs start munching on those leaves, they detest it, they hate it. They'll, they'll leave, they drop off, they go somewhere else. And so it's, it's, a really, it's an organic way of protecting yeah, your plants. If you, if you were looking at that, that would be a great way, but you, you say two to four tablets per gallon of water uh, dissolve, so mm -hmm. that, that if you were at, even if you had um, plants in pots around the house, that would be a good, good thing to do. Excellent. If I may, a lot of people have indoor palms inside their house. And palms, especially indoor and humid environments, get spider mites. This is another great thing. The spider mites will clean that up and you won't have to worry about them. Now, can I assume that the little package that comes with flowers that you get at the, the florist, maybe this, is, maybe aspirin? It, it's, a, a, it's usually some similar. form of acetylsalicylic acid. All right, so and the last thing that you put up there was the, uh, I guess, the, the alfalfa? Yeah, the alfalfa cubes. Yeah, that, let's see if we got that in. This was just something fun, but here we go. All right, so this, what we're seeing here, we're seeing a horse trough or a watering trough for livestock. We're seeing a, a greenhouse watering system, and then we're seeing this poor smallmouth bass or largemouth bass actually with algae. This, this has died. Algae blooms right now also in the, the state of Florida are a big issue. Um, alfalfa. This is what's fabulous about alfalfa. You can go to your local farm and feed and you can buy a, a 40 pound bag of alfalfa for about 16 bucks. Alfalfa, when it rots, produces a chemical very similar to hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is toxic to all life. You pour that on a plant, your plant's gonna die. You ingest it, you're gonna get really sick. Don't do that. Hydrogen peroxide is really bad. Alf uh, um, algae is the same way. You pour algae, pour a bottle of hydrogen peroxide in your horse trough and it's gonna kill all that algae. Your horse is gonna drink it and your horse is gonna get really sick and may even die. But it kills the algae. So, but what alfalfa happens, what, when alfalfa and barley decompose, it produces a, a chemical compound very similar to hydrogen peroxide, has the exact same effect on plants, on algae. It kills off the algae, but it's completely harmless to mammals, humans, fish, insects. It doesn't, it, it, because it's molecularly different enough, it doesn't harm them, but it, the algae hate it and it will die. So if you have a horse trough, throw 10 pellets of alfalfa in that horse trough and you never have to clean the algae out of that horse trough. So you, can, you could put some of this into a, a pond, like we have a fountain in front of the, the building here and some from time to time, I guess when it gets real warm, algae will develop the green, green Warmth algae. and sunlight. And it is in full sun in the front. Right. You get that, you'll get a scum. You'll get this algae film on the top. If we could find some bales of alfalfa, probably two bales of alfalfa, throw that in the pond, we'd never have to clean algae out of that pond. Now, does it last a long time? Uh, we'd probably have to do that about every year. Every year. Two bales of alfalfa are probably going to run 
uh, 10 bucks a bale, 15 bucks a bale. But for $30 to control algae for an entire year in that pond, it's very economical. And it looks, it looks good too. It does. Uh, probably healthier for the fish. It is. It uh, is. All right. I tell you, Joe, we're, we've got some great information here today. We're going to talk a little bit more about the horticulture programs. And uh, Joe Peterson will be back in just a minute. Don't go away. You're watching Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television, WCJX and WQHL Radio. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in. Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. Welcome back to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. I tell you, we are full of nature public service announcements from the food, having rabbits sell saving the food to mosquitoes to uh, dig, call before you dig. So uh, Joe is the uh, director of horticulture programs and water resource programs here at Florida Gateway College. Um, if you are interested in a career in horticulture, uh, would you suggest coming to see you and, and talking to you first before someone commits to, to being a part of the program? I do like to advise with my students. I like to sit down with people and really find out if this is a good fit. Uh, horticulture is a blast. It's a, it's a very rewarding career. Um, if you desire to be home every night, have a family, or if you have a family and you're looking for a good career move, um, you'll be able to go to your children's baseball games and soccer games or your daughter's play practice or whatever it is. You'll, you'll be home in the evenings and that, and that makes it really nice. Uh, but it is hard. It's hard work. You're working outside, you're, it's, but it's rewarding. Now, if you're, a, I mean, as someone who's retired mm -hmm. that would like to, to do a little more, learn a little bit more about maybe your, their home garden or doing things a little differently, is this something for them that, that maybe don't come and get the horticulture certificate, but just take some classes in it? Yeah, you just need to call me and uh, we'll discuss that. If you tell me what you're looking for, what you want to accomplish, just even if it's just to, uh, you're a lifelong learner, you don't really care about the certificate, but you want to come take the classes, you want to get, well, you want to have a green thumb. I'd like to teach you that. My staff would like to teach you that. So anybody can come. Let's talk, let's sit down and discuss what the best classes for you to take. And there are jobs available if, if you're interested. Uh, I know that uh, I'm sure you get calls and we're probably still getting calls from golf course operators all over the state saying, hey, you got anybody who knows a little bit about this or a little bit about that? that that's right. Well, the, the golf course industry probably on average sends me about two to three potential jobs every week. They're looking for superintendents and assistant superintendents and spray technicians and uh, and. Well, there's there's so many and and just a little stat here that I learned last year is 60% of the golf course superintendents in the state of Florida retire in the next four years which means the assistants are going to step up into those roles and they don't have anybody to fill those roles and that's where we come into play we'd like people to come and get their horticulture certificates earn their associate's degree in agribusiness management with us and then take that and we can get them a great job starting a you know, great starting salary right off the bat and with great career placement and, and opportunities for growth. It's huge. You know, the thing I think a lot of people don't understand is, is if, you, if you're looking at what Lake City has to offer as far as golf, uh, there's a whole new world out there in the golf industry in places like Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. I mean, there's what, probably 60 courses in the West Palm Beach area and they're mm -hmm. like in very nice resort areas. So the jobs and the type of job is much different than what you'd see locally. So I would suggest you come talk to Joe and let him at least uh, show you what's out there. Uh, we have uh, a lot of resources here that um, can help you find that job uh, in where, whatever. Uh, but you can call him at 754-4218 or joseph.peterson at fgc.edu. Either way, you're going to get back with these folks. That's right. right. I'll get back with them. He can talk to you about what tuition is, uh, how much a degree is going to cost. We were going to cover that today, but we have kind of run out of time. 
uh, but he can answer all your questions. Joe, welcome uh, again for the first time on the program, and uh, good luck. Thank hope, you. Hope you have continued success. And thank you for watching and listening to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. Until next time, I'm Mike McKee. We'll see you.